Well, thanks for being here at the For Your Life Retreat. You're gonna be hearing a lot of talk about flourishing in ministry for these two days. What does flourishing look like for you? If, if you were to draw a picture, what would you draw? Might it be a field of flowers that are bursting in bloom, or maybe a flowing stream, or maybe a forest of dark green trees with sunlight bursting through them? Or it might even be uh, seedlings that have burst through the ground and are beginning to open up the first leaves. Well, I hope one of these images of flourishing might resonate with you over this time that you're here because we are talking about flourishing in ministry. And I have the opportunity today to share with you our understanding of what it means for clergy to flourish as a clergy excellence team. Our understanding of flourishing is based on the research done by Matt Bloom at Notre Dame. And he has researched caring professionals in two different research projects. And he has found that excellence and joy are the outcome of well-being. For ministry, for per, uh, persons in ministry, he's found that flourishing is experiencing high levels of well-being. So what do we mean by well-being? Well, Bloom has identified four dimensions of well-being. Happiness, authenticity, resiliency, and thriving. So happiness is the day-to-day -day feeling that get, leaves us with good feelings. How do we feel on a day-to-day -day basis? Do we have more good days than bad? Do we have good moments, positive moments throughout the day, especially on those tough days? There are certain encounters that deplete our happiness and others build it up during the day. And a balance of the two will help us to be more happy in the work that we do. Bloom has found out that happiness actually will accumulate for two days. So if you have a good day, you'll have that residual feeling of happiness for a couple of days. However, if you have an unhappy day, that can last for up to four days past that initial day. So if we have too many unhappy days, we can find that then it makes it hard to build back up to a level of happiness. He has also identified chronic happiness as having three happy days for every unhappy day. Wouldn't we all love to have a diagnosis of being chronically happy? So resiliency is the second dimension that he has identified of well-being. Resiliency is the ability to manage the day-to-day -day demands of our, of our uh, busy and varied life as clergy. It also is the ability to bounce back when things don't go as we plan. It's about how do we um, adjust our plans, how do we adjust our schedules, how do we adjust our goals in order to meet what really happens around us. If we don't have high resiliency, we're more likely to end up in a burned out situation in ministry. But there are ways that we can increase our resiliency. Self-awareness is one of those. That means being aware of our feelings, our emotions, and our behaviors. Self-reflectivity is reflecting on those feelings and uh, behaviors and looking at how we are doing over the course of a day. Self-control builds resiliency because it helps us to decide what needs to be changed and then take the progress that we need in order to bring change about. Resiliency is improved with greater happiness. Greater happiness leads to better decision-making capabilities, more creativity, more joy with what happens around us. Authenticity is the next dimension of well-being. Authenticity is about how able are we to be our true selves. The context that we are in can challenge our ability to be authentic. Sometimes it's a theological mismatch. Sometimes it's just conflict within the congregation. Sometimes it's about the uh, whole environment that we are in that will affect our ability to be authentic. Bloom uses the image of a theater as he talks about authenticity. Ministry in reality is a lot about being a performer on a stage. Worship is a performance, funerals can be looked at as a performance. Um, even doing pastoral care can be a performance where we put on our image of a pastor. 
But like a theater, there is a backstage. The backstage is where the actors go to reflect on what has happened on the on stage. What has happened in their, in their uh, lines? Have they delivered them well? Clergy need a backstage, a place where you can step back, be not the performer, but can rehearse difficult conversations, practice those with a trusted peer. The backstage is where you can review what has happened, where you can rehearse and relax and rest in good company. The backstage is where there are those who care for the performers. In other words, that's the model of a good covenant group for clergy, the backstage. But Bloom also talks about clergy needing the offstage. The offstage is where you totally disengage from ministry, from where you put away the cell phone, you don't look at texts, you no longer look at the emails. It's where you really take time off where you take a vacation and don't check in with the church every day while you're on vacation. But in order to really have a good offstage, clergy need to have um, practices and, uh, that, that disengage them from ministry. They also need to have other interests and hobbies so that these interests and these hobbies and these other pastimes can totally occupy your mind and allow you to disengage. The final dimension of well-being is thriving. Thriving is about finding meaning and purpose in what you do. And it's also about integrating your core values and your core beliefs into all that you do and all that you are. So it's about living out who you have determined your best to be. Thriving happens when we are connected to something beyond ourselves. when we stay connected to God, to that individual, that person, that entity that is bigger than ourselves. Thriving is also about the connections that we have to community, both our local church and the broader community around us. Important to thriving is those relationships that we have around us. Our relationships with other pastors, do we have trusted colleagues that we can call on? How about our spouse and our family? The quality of those relationships is highly important as we look at thriving. Do we have friends outside of ministry? Or do we only have clergy colleagues? Those friends outside of ministry help us to disengage from our ministry in ways that clergy colleagues don't always do. Our relationships with our congregation will help us to thrive if those relationships are healthy. And also those relationships that you have with the denominational leaders, your DS for instance. But these relationships that we have are the ways that others give us evidence of our identity and our meaning. The ways that they tell us that we are important in who we are and what we do. During this retreat time, our hope is that you will discover some new creativity and innovation for your ministry as a result of having time and space to listen, to discern what God is telling you, and to figure out how you are going to res respond to the ministry that God is telling, calling you to for this season of your life. You have intentional space to do with what you want, to celebrate what you have done in ministry, to listen and to reflect. May you take time to ask God, where, oh God, are you calling me next? And in answering that question, may you figure out the ways that you can flourish in ministry. Where are you going to sprout new growth? How will others see evidence of your flourishing? Thanks for being here.